this is Rachel from Seven and All, and today I am going to be doing a thorough review of Around the World with Picture Books, Part One from Beautiful Feet Books. Let's get started. All right, for background, I have been using Around the World, Part One, for the literature spine, the theme, the main core theme of my son's kindergarten year thus far. We don't tend to stick to traditional school years, so I think we started this in March and we're now wrapping this up in around late September. So that's the context. We're just about at the end. We're starting to wrap this up. And to give you an overall word of caution to start off with, if you use this curriculum, you might find yourself needing to add a little bit more to your vacation budget because now when we ask my son, hey, what do you wanna do this weekend? He'll say, I wanna go on vacation to Egypt and go on a helicopter ride above the Nile River so that I can see crocodiles. And then we have to tone down his expectations a little bit for our Saturday morning activity. Um, but definitely we have experienced having the world opened up and getting an idea of just the beautiful experiences and cultures and interesting things that you can find all around our world so far. That's kind of my preview. I am going to be getting into depth on this curriculum, giving you an in-depth review, as well as some of my tips on implementing this most effectively in homeschool. Now, I do have an affiliate link for Beautiful Feet Books, which I'll leave down in the description below. And one thing I appreciate a lot about Beautiful Feet Books that is kind of unique for literature-based curriculums is how customizable their bundles are. So if you buy this, if you purchase this bundle from Beautiful Feet Books, you do have the option of removing some books out of the bundle if you already have those books, or if you're planning to replace them with a different book that you already have or that you like better. So I really like that they give that customizable option. That's something to look into, but you can head to their website to check out this bundle as well as any of the other literature bundles and guides that Beautiful Feet Books offers. I'm gonna talk through the different pieces of this, some of its limitations and some of its strengths. So let's keep going. Around the World Part One is a literature-based study of Asia, Africa, Australia, and Antarctica. So it's not covering the whole world. There is a part two that you can use to um, check out Europe as well as South America. So this curriculum consists of the teacher's guide, which is full color and very full of a lot of information and ideas, photographs, paintings. So you have the teacher's guide and then you have books. You have about 17 books. Here's though where I want to caution you. If you just buy this guide and you buy the 17 books, um, if you've used a different literature curriculum that includes all the books you need in the package, you might be thinking, okay, these are the books that I need for my study of these countries. If, you try to, if you're going in with that expectation or you try to take that approach, you might find yourself actually a little bit disappointed because um, if you just stick to the core books that are contained in the core package, it's not actually that much. There's not actually that many stories that are included in just those 17 books when you're studying something like 10 or 11 countries. So I would wanna caution you not to go into this study expecting that those are gonna be the only 17 books you need to have. The teacher's guide has many, many other book recommendations for taking the study further. So every country is going to have a library connection as well as biography and history connections with book recommendations that go beyond the books included in the bundle itself. So there's many, many books recommended in the guide beyond just these 17 books. And depending on your situation, if you have great library access, you might be able to get a whole bunch of those books and pull them all in and just have a very rich study. If you're like me and you're living overseas and you don't really have um, what North Americans would think of as library access, then um, you might need to be prepared, that you need to prepare ahead of time and get some of these extra books, get access to extra books and resources to really flesh out the study a little more. Because you might find out that the number of books um, included for some of the countries is pretty skimpy. For example, 
Um, you study both Australia and Morocco in this, in this study. And you get one book for both Australia and Morocco. It's a cool book. It is a wordless picture book. It's also wordless. So you get one um, wordless picture book for both Morocco and then the other side is Australia, which to me, it feels kind of impossible to do a very um, <laughs> rich literature-based study of both Australia and Morocco trying to lean on one book. And I, with me not having a lot of library access, I do need to be prepared ahead of time to know, okay, no, you're actually gonna have to purchase more books. They have more book recommendations su suggested in the guide, but you can't just rely on the books in the bundle. One more consideration to think about with the books that are included in the bundle is to think about how much you can really learn and understand about a country based on the books that are included. I'll give another example. So for India, the two books included in the bundle are The Story of Little Babaji and Once a Mouse. Both of these are old um, picture books, old classic picture books within Western literature, and both of them are kind of fables of a sort. Um, they're not realistic stories. They're not meant to be realistic stories. They're not meant to represent real life in India. I would say if you're trying to rely on these two books to gain much understanding of life in India, culture in India, you're going to be disappointed. There's just not that much, there's not that much you can glean from these two stories. Um, they're enjoyable to read, the, the, my young boys enjoyed these, but if we'd been limited to these, I, I wouldn't have felt that they would have really represented, let's learn about Indian geography and culture all that well. Um, so I would wanna be adding in books about Indian food, and there's a lot of great picture books which focus on different food traditions of India, or going to market, or getting ready for one of, um, one of the festivals or one of the special occasions. Um, in, in India. So that's another thing to just think about is when you're looking at the books in the core um, curriculum, think about some of them are going to be a little bit limited in how much you can really glean about a culture if you are limited to just those books. So all this to say, don't necessarily invest in this and expect it to be open and go and have every single thing you need to have a rich study. If you are willing to do the work, if you're willing to do the preparation, and if you have access to more resources, you probably will have an amazing study of different countries around the world and really gain a lot. But if you are limited to just what's in the package and you're trying to use this as an open and go resource, probably some of the learning results will end up being a little bit limited too. Now for each country represented in the study, you will find consistent sections that are repeated. First of all, you start by going over a map from this book. And this is a really fun book. This is the kind of book that my sons love to just pull out and pour over page after page. If you haven't seen the inside, okay, there's, there's Asia for you. Um, but here's a map of China. If you haven't seen the inside, this is what it looks like. There's a lot of really cool things. You can use this very map as a jumping off point, and we often did. I'd ask them to pick a few things that they wanted to know more about, and I'd talk more about those things, teach more, or find resources to help me teach more about those things. But these maps are really fun, really cool. I foresee this being a book that we will go back to again and again over the years of our homeschool. I believe there's also a newer edition which has more countries represented on the maps in it, and I think it's like golden color, but you can look out for that. Besides the maps book, then you also have your lessons which are based on the books in the curriculum. And in the lessons in the guide, I do wanna point out, it doesn't just tell you to read the book. It typically tells you to read the book, but it also points out interesting features of the book, things that you should notice, or discussion questions, or literary questions that you can bring up with your child. So definitely take the time to read the guide, notice those, get the most out of those ideas that you can. Other types of resources in the guide that you can expect are the book recommendations for the library connection, as well as history and biography. 
So they have all those book recommendations and it's not just a simple book list. They do kind of give you ideas of what's cool about that book, tell you about a little bit about that book to help you know, oh yeah, we should, we should try to get that one if we can. Um, so they have those as well as they have lessons that connect to animals from that country, art from that country, and every country culminates with a recipe or a food based lesson and experience. You also can, um, notebooking is integrated in all Beautiful Feet Books programs. And the back of the guide has a lot of black and white coloring images that you can cut out and paste into a notebook. And we have really used these, liked these. It's convenient to have the maps and the flags and the animals. And we've kind of taken this concept and run with it because my son now, when we learn about something else from that country, he'll be like, oh, we need to print out something else that he can color and add to his notebook. So we've really enjoyed notebooking. We've really been building up our country notebook as we've gone through the study. When we, whenever we do one of the art projects or any art project I come up with, then we'll just try to paste that art project in the notebook as well. And that's been a really fun element of the study for us. Now, some of my tips for implementing this and really making the most of it and making the most of your year with Beautiful Feet Books. One, I would suggest when you go into studying one of these countries, have in mind a few key takeaways that you want your children to get out of learning about this country. And that might vary depending on the age of your children. So some of the key takeaways I wanted was I wanted my children to be able to find the country on a map. I wanted them to know the capital city. I wanted them to be able to recognize the flag. Um, so those were the basic things that I would want for every country. So those were things that we have reviewed and reviewed. Even when we go on to a new country, we still go back to our world map and we find all the countries we've learned and we point out their capitals. We talk about, hey, what did their flag look like? We talk about the symbolism on their flag. So those were just some basic takeaways I wanted my kids to have. Um, because when you look at this guide, it, um, you might just get a little lost or you might not really know, hmm, what do I want, what do I want my kids to take away from learning about this country? So those were the basic ones. But then also for each country, I would choose a few things, a few things that I thought were worth knowing about, which might be places and landmarks, like maybe the Great Wall of China, the Terracotta Warriors of Qin Shi Huang Di, or um, maybe Mount Fuji, different um, character Uluru from Australia. Um, different major landmarks that were cool, that are worth remembering and learning about, um, that I would want my kids to also remember and have some familiarity with, or some, a lot of times they have become now <laughs> wish list vacation destinations for my son, who thinks it's probably possible for us to travel everywhere he learns about. <laughs> um, so I'd, I'd want to have a few of those things. I would also pick a few interesting or important cultural influences and talk about that. We even talked also a little bit about some key things that have happened in the history. I haven't gone a lot into history just because of the age of my children. With older kids, you could definitely do more with history, but I've picked out different key cultural elements, talking about the importance of red in Chinese culture and the significance of that, learning a little bit about, about how the Chinese language works and how characters come together with radicals and phonetics because um, the Chinese language is amazing. <laughs> Talking about filial, pi filial piety when we were learning about China. Or in Japan, we talked about kawaii and its, its influence on culture and on food. And on <laughs> we got to, uh, we watched a video of different cafes and kawaii food options we can get if we go to Japan someday. So that's just an example of something I tried to do when I was planning different countries. I would try to come up with just a couple of key things that when they look back on the study, I want them to remember, kind of be able to hang their memory on a few, a few big ideas about each country, a few big ideas that can kind of hopefully stick with them over the years to come. At the same time, I would also recommend don't treat this like this is the last time you're ever going to talk about this country or study this country or do anything with this country. Treat this as a foundation. <laughs> treat this as the basic idea, something that they can hang their hooks on that next time they hear about Australia when they're learning history or next time they hear about Morocco or Egypt or Tanzania, they'll be like, hey, hey, I know something about that country. I know about this. I know something about it. Like, 
we're trying to build a basic level of familiarity. And I often recommend that in homeschool. Don't try to treat this like this is our only chance that we're gonna study this and we need to go all out and we need to cover everything and do everything. Especially with young children, I think that can be kind of overwhelming and just not very realistic. So treat this as a baseline. And for me, I that also looks like I'm not planning on getting rid of the books that I've gotten for this study anytime soon. I plan on these books coming out and reconnecting with different parts of our studies and different parts of our lives and our reading journey at different times over the years to come. We've read a lot of great books, books that I definitely intend to bring out again and again. I'll show just a few here. One of them was Ruby's Wish, which is a fantastic book um, that really has a lot to share about Chinese culture. We get to touch on language and the value for education in Chinese culture. Really, really cool. Chinese traditional homes to the traditional family compound. Traveling Man I've talked about before, but this is one that's definitely going to come out when we're studying this time period in history, the 1300s. We can bring out Seeker of Knowledge again when we're studying ancient history and Egyptian hieroglyphs um, so that we can understand that. Annos China. I know people can be kind of split on the Annos wordless picture books, but I thought it was really cool and I think there's a lot um, that you can see and that you can glean about um, ways of life in different parts of China from this book. Um, and this is a definitely a book that we're going to come back to again and again through the years. I really liked the history connected picture books that we were able to get like Manjiro. This was a new story to me and one that was very very engaging and memorable and one that we can bring out once again when we come to this time period in history in the future when we're studying different time periods and this is more modern history. So that's my other tip is don't, don't treat this like this is a once and done. We're gonna learn about Japan once in our lives and that's all. This is, this, all learning connects in so many ways and it can connect across disciplines and across subjects. But uh, treat this as a foundation and consider being willing to hold on to these resources and come back to them and show how different things connect through different periods of history, through different themes within the world and within literature itself. Um, and that's my plan of how I want to make the most of these resources I have invested in. One more tip is that it is easier to make a very rich connection with the countries that you're studying when, you, when your kids have some kind of connection with it, which for our family was kind of easy <laughs> with, this, with this round because we live in Asia. We've traveled to several of these Asian countries. We've lived in some of the countries that we studied. Um, we have um, my dad had gone to Australia very shortly before we studied Australia and so he was able to bring us back postcards and boomerangs and little coins and things like that. So um, depending on your family situation, you might have more or less connection to different countries that you study, but whatever connection you have, do try to like inform your kids of it. When we studied Tanzania and Kenya, I told them about our family member that has been there and what they did there, what they got to see and explore and the things like that. So I think having those kind of real life connections, even if you can't actually travel to the Nile and go on a helicopter ride to see crocodiles, <laughs> um, try to create real life connections when you can with these countries. All right, I hope that this was a helpful review and gave you some helpful tips um, if you are considering using this in your homeschool or even if you're just considering doing your own kind of around the world study. I'd love to hear what you have done for world geography with your young children. All right, let me know in the comments below and I'll be seeing you next time. Bye.